Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And tomorrow, the Queen of the Night chapter will start inside the Battle Pass. It is a temporary chapter that will last for 11 days, and your reward, if you want to be able to get it, will be the TVP-100. This is the first Czechoslovakian tank destroyer, which I've already done a full tank review on. And so if you want to know everything there is to know about that tank, go and check out that video first. If you don't have the time between now and tomorrow to be able to watch the full tank review, long story, this is an incredible tank for a very good player. Probably an average tank for an average player, and I'd say it's a below average tank for a below average player. It's definitely something that all of you experts out there are going to be able to want to get your hands on. So, just what do you have to do to be able to get the TVP-100? Well, firstly, you could just log into the game, spend 10,000 gold on skipping through it all right from the get-go and get your hands on it. But I feel like that might be a little bit of a waste, and you might as well just play casually over the 11-day event, see where you get to, and then maybe dump the gold in at the end if you want to top it up. But for all of you players who want to know exactly how long it will be able to take to get this completely for free, or alternatively, how you can most efficiently invest your time to be able to get the maximum discount, well, this is the video for you. So, in true quacky baby fashion, I've decided to break everything down into an Excel spreadsheet. Firstly, draw your eyes towards the top and you can see exactly the dates that this event will run, starting tomorrow, the 12th of May, and it will end on Monday, the 23rd of May. Be warned, however, that on the Monday, it will finish at 6 a.m. And I believe Wargaming have also said that there will be no opportunity to purchase stages that you missed after it ends. So make sure you do everything before you go to bed on Sunday night. To be able to get the TVP 100 and to complete the temporary chapter, you are going to need to get 2,000 regular battle pass points, i.e. getting through 40 stages of a battle pass. Now, firstly, I want to give you my big warning. Activate the chapter. If you do not activate the chapter when the event starts tomorrow, all of your progress will not be made towards it. And that can be devastating if you waste your first day of your bonus missions. Next, turn off Grand Battles, because Grand Battles will not be counting towards the progress of the Battle Pass as far as I've been made aware. So a lot of you might be thinking, can you save up a load of points today and then be able to use them to invest into the, the temporary chapter tomorrow? No, Wargaming's already thought of that. You're going to be having to start afresh and all of the points that you may have saved up will not be able to switch across if you turn off your chapter progress today. So to get 2,000 points over 11 days means that you are going to have to get roughly about 180 battle pass points every single day. Down this area of the presentation, you can see what stage I recommend that you complete after each of the days if you want to be on track towards completing the challenge successfully. As we have 11 days and not 10, it varies between completing three to four stages every single day. If that sounds like a, a tall ask, and yes it is, well, maybe I can help you out with some of my recommendations about how to make it a little bit easier. Firstly, daily missions. This is without a doubt the biggest opportunity you have to cut down on the amount that you will have to grind. So when I talk about daily missions, what I mean is the ones that you will see behind me up here inside your garage. When you complete these daily missions, you get 10 points for one, 15, 20, and then the bonus one after gives you 25. This adds up to being able to get 70 Battle Pass points every single day, and it is without a shadow of a doubt the biggest way for you to may be able to make progress. Depending on how good you are at the game, you might be getting between, on average, two to five Battle Pass points every single game that you play. And so by taking advantage of the daily missions, you're saving yourself between 30 or 20 games that you would have to grind if you did not have access to these daily missions, which everyone does. It's not only a premium account thing. Also, you are able to re-roll your daily missions, so maybe do that if you see any really tricky ones, perhaps in the morning, before you play later on in that day. And the re-roll timer is four hours, so by just clicking the mission re-roll button, you could be able to skip through those really tricky ones, Go away for four hours, come back and finish it maybe before you go to bed. Now be warned, while the regular bonus missions are fairly easy, the final one can be quite tricky. Maybe it requires you to finish number one on experience. Maybe it requires you to win five battles or grind 4,500 base experience. 
it can either take you one game or sometimes it can take you 5, 10, 15 games to be able to complete the bonus mission. However, you will be able to do all of these while you're playing regularly but you might also want to try and adjust your playstyle a little bit if you're trying to rush through it. Now, if you're able to get these 70 points for each of the 11 days available, that is going to be 770 points of the 2000 Battle Pass, but it will require you to play for about an hour to three hours every single day just to be able to get those points. But remember, the time that you're investing is also going to be points that you're racking up outside of that. So really, if you want to be able to get this event done in a time efficient way you're going to have to find a way to be able to at least complete those bonus missions on every single day because every day that you don't is going to be many 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 hours you're going to have to spend on top of the time that you would have to invest on a different day because you missed those bonus missions. Next, there is an opportunity to be able to get 50 bonus points for completing 45 daily missions, i.e. this big chunk that you see here. Now, if you've managed to get your bar near completion, then that's going to give you a nice big bonus fairly early into the event. However, be warned that you're only going to be able to get four completions every day for free. And if you're a premium player, you're going to have an additional three completions that you can add into the mix. And so at worst, you're only going to be able to get the 50 bonus points once. At best, you're going to be able to get the 50 bonus points points twice. And so accordingly, I've adjusted it that you're only going to be able to complete it once into my calculations and if you know you're going to be able to complete it twice well then you can adjust the time down just a little bit maybe save you an hour so outside of these two methods the only way for you to be able to gain battle pass points to be able to make your way through the different 40 stages that you're going to have to complete will be to play now if you are playing any vehicle that's tier 6 plus that is not the next three tanks that i'll be talking about you will get seven points if you win in the top three five points if you lose in the top three, five if you win in the top five, or shall I say top 10 as well, and three if you lose and you're in the top 10. Accordingly, I think you're quickly going to get an idea of how many times you're going to have to play to be able to get the extra points that you will need outside of your daily bonus missions or the 50 daily completion, or shall I say the 45 daily completion. Now, there are three Battle Pass highlighted tanks the Leopard, the Cranvong, and the T124 that do get bonus points. The T124 gets plus three points if you're in the top three, but only if you're in the top three. The Cranvong gets plus two if you're in the top five, and the Leopard, you get one extra point if you're in the plus 10. Accordingly, you can use these three tanks if you have them in the garage to be able to accelerate your progress. But you should also be warned that you will not be able to play those tanks anymore to make progress if you've already grinded them a lot already. For example, I've already got 467 out of 1,000 bat maximum battle pass points in the Cranvang, so even if I was just to play Cranvang all day for the entire event, I would only be able to get 500 of the over 1,000 battle pass points that I need in the Cranvang. I have to admit, Wargaming, what are you, what are you thinking if people have already been playing those vehicles already. They had no idea that they would probably have to play them during time-gated event. And let me know in the comments down below if you've already played your Cranvang and your Leopard to the max and you're no longer going to be able to benefit from the extra bonus points through this event. Really, if Wargaming had something like this planned, they should have warned us or they maybe they should have reset the points for the Leopard, the Cranvang and the T124 when the event started. So, with the fact in mind that you are going to have to get 180 Battle Pass points every day and that you are going to be able to get 70 of those points if you complete each of your four dailies and also that you're going to get that 50 bonus points once, at least once, to twice for the completion which will average out to about between four and nine points a day whether you complete it once or twice if you're lucky and you have a premium account that means that you are going to need to grind 105 battle pass points every single day outside of your daily missions if you want to be able to complete this challenge now keep in mind that to be able to earn points you are going to have to finish in the top 10 and so accordingly 
this makes it much more tricky for an average and a below average player to be able to gain points than it does for an above average player. Above average players are going to be earning more points for possibly finishing in the top three. Maybe they're going to take their Kranvang out and get extra bonus points for finishing in the top five. Whereas the below average players are really going to struggle to consistently even finish in the top 10 and be able to make progress towards their stage completions. Next, I'd like to highlight this table here. Break it. I'll break it down for you. What I've done is I've estimated how many points I think that players, depending on their win ratio, will be able to get in all of the games that they play. I estimate that somebody who has 45% wins overall on their entire account will be in the top 10, maybe 50% of the time. I've estimated that somebody who has 49% win ratio overall on their account might be on the top 10 based on experience about two thirds of the time. Somebody who has 55% wins on their account overall will finish in the top 10, maybe 75% of the time. And you real influential players out there with 60% wins are probably gonna be finishing in the top 10 about 85%. And so this significantly changes the kind of battle pass points averages that those players will be earning. I've estimated that somebody with 45% wins will be getting about 2.33 battle pass points per game, whereas it uh, scales up to 3.5 for 55% win rate players and close to 4 for 60% win rate players, purely because they're finishing in the top 10 more often. And also, they're winning their games, which rewards more points more often. So just like with War all of Wargaming's other challenges, it's going to be exceedingly harder for the below average players to complete it than for the sweaty unicorns to be able to smash their way through it. So considering that I, I've estimated that a 45% win rate player will be getting 2.33 points per game, considering that they need to be able to get 105 points per day, that means they're going to have to play 45 games of World of Tanks per day. And I estimate that's going to take about four and a half hours for an average of six minute rounds. Now that's including clicking your next tank, loading into the battle, waiting those 30 seconds as well. So I think that usually a game of World of Tanks takes on average about four to five minutes. That's including your, your lifetime and getting back into the garage. So that's why I've made it six minutes on average, thinking you can play about 10 games per hour, give or take, depending on your play style. Somebody who's completely average at World of Tanks with 49% wins, I think you're going to have to play about 34 games a day on top of you completing those bonus missions. But remember, you can do them at the same time. And I think that you will, if you play for three and a half hours, have hopefully completed those bonus missions. Um, yeah, so three and a half hours per day, roughly. Somebody who's got about 55% wins in World of Tanks, I think you're going to have to play for about three hours a day. And players who've got 60% wins in regular tanks, you're going to have to play for about two and two thirds hours per day. So about two hours and 40 minutes. Now, keep in mind that this table and all of the statistics that I just read out I've estimated for players who are playing regular tanks, i.e. tier six plus, that aren't getting the bonus points. Now, because it's really hard for me to estimate how often a 45% win rate player finishes top three or top five or top 10, I'm only gonna do it for the Leopard. But take a look at how much the bonus point that the Leopard gets, irrelevant of where it finishes, as long as it finishes in the top 10, has for the implications of how much you have to play. Because of that one extra point, it means that 45% win rate players will have will be getting about 2.83 points per game, half a point average. 49% win rate players are going to be getting about 3.74 points per game. 55% win rate players up to about 4.25. And I've estimated that 60% win rate players are probably going to be getting about 4.8 points per game that they play in their Leopard. So this significantly cuts down the amount of games that you have to play by, for the best players, five and for the worst players eight just for having played the leopard rather than playing a different tank meaning that if you were to only play the leopard for this event you could probably cut down the time that you have to play by roughly about half an hour however keep in mind that you aren't going to just be able to play your leopard all day every day i'm gonna have to go over towards the right here because you can only earn a thousand battle pass points in the leopard so i'm sure all of you out there who have been grinding the leopard a lot are going to probably be quite devastated that you're not going to be able to play this tank constantly to be able to make your way through this event faster 
And Wargaming, I don't even know what you're thinking about having such an attractive tank to accelerate people through a temporary chapter. I expect that, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do it in this video as well, because I'm going to make this, this idea more popular, that you're going to see so many Leopards in the matchmaker. And whether that's healthy for the game or not well, it remains to be seen. If you're somebody who uh, who um, probably wants to play some FE4-005s, yeah, you might want to take them out onto the battlefield because I think that the matchmaker is going to be filled with at least three to five leopards in every single game that you play. When people cotton on, it's such a fast way to be able to accelerate your battle pass points. And again, I'd like to go back to my point of how frustrated I would personally be if I had all 1,000 points in my leopard to begin with. That would be horrendous. Or if I had my, my Cranfong all capped out on points because I played it in a lot of ranked. Now, there's one other way that you can be able to get battle pass points, and that is by finishing tanks. And when I say finishing tanks, I mean by fully filling out their points total. So, for example, if I take a look at my Cranvang here, you'll see I'm at 467 out of 1,000 maximum points. If I reach that 1,000 point maximum during the event, I'm going to get 35 bonus points. Now, that's still significant. 35 bonus points might save you having to play five, six, or seven games. So maybe it'll save you half an hour of your life. Pretty cool. However, it's really hard for me to be able to try and factor that in. And if Wargaming are going to repeat this in future events, then I would thoroughly recommend that you try to maybe get all of your tanks close. And then when the event actually happens, you could just finish them and finish them and finish them and be able to make some real good progress. But unfortunately, because we didn't really know about what the system would uh, be for the first ever bonus chapter, this wasn't something that we have all prepared for. So, ladies and gents, boys and girls, with that in mind, how does that mean that this event compares to all of the previous events, which I have estimated how long they take to complete? Well, if we take a look at the Alt Proto event, I estimated that it was going to take between about 3.7 hours per day all the way up to 10 hours per day if you were a significantly below average player. Um, if we take a look at all of the others, they've all been very, very substantial with regards to their time requirements. This event will actually be the easiest tier 8 premium tank that you will ever be able to get your hands on if you do your daily missions every day. If you miss those daily missions, this is going to become an, a nightmare challenge. It really will. If you can only do your daily missions for half the time, you're going to be easily adding yourself an extra 350 points. And to be able to grind through 350 points, we're talking about having to spend another 100 or 200 games played just because you didn't play every single day. So it's a little bit un unfair, this event. It, it definitely rewards the kind of players who log in and play for an hour or two every single day, as opposed to the players who log in and play for about 12 hours every day. I think all in all, I understand what Wargaming are doing, and that it's it's nice that it, if you play every day, that this is going to be a significantly easier challenge to undertake, irrelevant if you're an incredible player or irrelevant if you're a below average player. But as always, I just strongly dislike when Wargaming try to force you to, to tell you when you have to play World of Tanks. And also, unless I'm wrong, how narrow-minded they were that they didn't take into account players who have already been playing the Leopard, the Cranvang, and the T110E4 a lot, and now they have no opportunity to actually get their bonus battle pass points when they really want them. And of course, this wouldn't be a challenge video that I talk about on YouTube unless I round it off by also mentioning be careful whenever a game starts to dictate when it wants you to play it. Especially if you've got a lot of other good things going on in your life. Maybe you've got some family commitments. Maybe you're just having to work really hard at your job. Or if you're a student who's studying for some exams, the idea of you having to log in to have to play for at least an hour or two every day for an 11 day period might not actually be healthy for you to be able to achieve things outside of your 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 pixels in your world of tanks garage and while obviously i'm ecstatic that i'm going to have to put way 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 less time into this mission marathon to be able to get a tank that is going to be 
really, really good for me and my play style. Trust me, this tank isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea and it's not like you're missing out on the best thing ever unless you're a good player. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was it for me today. I really hope you've enjoyed the video, enjoyed my breakdown, and that I've done the hard work so you don't have to. If you appreciate that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, but if you hate it the way that I break it down, give it a thumbs down. And good luck using this kind of cheat sheet to let you know how long you're going to have to play and what stages you should try and complete after each single day that you've played through. And I'm going to finish the video by reminding you once again, tomorrow when you log in, activate the chapter if you don't activate the chapter those daily mission progresses will be lost don't log in and play until you activate the chapter unless you're not going to bother trying to make your progress through it at all and you want to just focus on the other stages of the battle pass and if you're going to be undertaking this challenge let me know in the comments down below and if you want to have somebody who's going to be grinding through it along with you then i'm going to be streaming pretty much most days over the next 11 days that the challenge will be happening anyway that's it thank you all so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon